and NCL before the end of the year. The title of her speech tonight, Stay Hungry, Stay Foolish. Let us welcome Sherry Wright. Stay Hungry, Stay Foolish. For those of you that remember the Whole Earth Catalog, it was out in the late 60s and early 70s. It was a catalog about being self-sustainable. It offered inspiration, it offered education, it offered encouragement for a self-sustainable lifestyle. When that catalog published its last issue, on the back page, the very last words were, Stay Hungry, Stay Foolish. Steve Jobs used those words, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about his life tonight. Fellow Toastmasters and see you. it's nice to have you here. Steve Jobs was born in 1955. He was the illegitimate child of two graduate students who decided they could not keep him and they were going to place him for adoption. The mother had the stipulation that he be adopted by parents of, uh, that had graduated college. When he was born, the parents that had been chosen, two attorneys, chose not to take him because he was not a girl. They wanted a girl. He was ultimately adopted by a, a middle class family who the mother had gone to high school but not college. The father had not graduated high school. The biological mother agreed to this only under the stipulation that they assured her that he would go to college. They would put him through college. And they did. They told her that that would happen. He was a troubled child. He didn't do well in school. and performed very, very poorly. They didn't quite know what to do with him until he happened upon a fourth grade teacher who had the foresight and the, the, the um, creativity, really, to bribe him. And she bribed him with $5 bills and candy and he began performing very, very well. In fact, he performed so well he skipped the fifth grade, went into middle school. The middle school was a rough school and there was a lot of bullying and he was intimidated and angered by this and he came home and he very firmly told his parents, either you put me in another school or I quit. I'm not going back. The parents agreed and they moved and interestingly enough they moved to Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and that's where Steve Jobs went to, to school. When he was 14 years old he, he met Steve Wazinski and he also took an electronic class in high school. He was very creative in this class. And he ended up calling uh, Bill Hewitt and asking to borrow parts and different things so that he could take it to his class, Bill Hewitt, the founder of HP. He then worked for him for one summer. And he and Steve Wozniak began building uh, boards and parts out of, out of a neighbor's garage. Steve Jobs' father, seeing this, this possibility in his son, began to buy him Heath kits. I don't know if any of you remember the old Heath kits, but they were little kits, electronic kits, and you put things together, and he was fascinated that he could make things work. He graduated from high school, went to a very expensive private college. When he got there, he performed poorly, and he realized that he was spending all of his parents' savings on, on this college education that he was doing nothing with. He dropped out. He stayed in a friend's dorm room, slept on the floor, traded in pop bottles for a nickel, walked seven miles once a week in order to get a free dinner at the Hare Krishna temple, kind of just wandered around and took some random classes because he was no longer a full-time student. He then decided to follow his spiritual quest and went to India. Did some rather uh, things that were probably common during that time, but we would also think of as deviant, dropped some acid, did some drugs, uh, lived in a commune, decided that he would go on an all-fruit diet because he thought that mucus wouldn't be created in the body if he were on all-fruit, then he wouldn't have to bathe any longer. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a boy to me. <laughs> when he was 20 years old, he and Steve Wozniak got together again and began building computers out of his parents' garage. And they formed their own business. They formed the Apple business. They wanted to have Hewitt Packard pick up the business, but they didn't want it. So they made their own corporation and they became Apple. And Apple, the name was chosen for a variety of reasons. Johnny Appleseed, they thought of themselves as spreading the seed of computers across 
uh, the masses. They thought of Eve. They thought of when Steve Jobs lived on the community, he harvested apples. And they thought of Isaac Newton. But most especially, they thought about the Beatles. And the Beatles record company was Apple Records. And that was their inspiration for naming the country Apple. By the time Steve was 25 years old, he was a millionaire. By the time he was 30, he was fired from his own corporation. This was quite a blow to him, and it really set him back, but just momentarily, because he realized he loved, loved what he did. So he continued doing it. He started his own company called Next. He also bought Pixar, an animation company from George Lucas. He turned that into 3D animation and movies, and we all know Toy Story and A Bug's Life, uh, Finding Nemo. These were all the results of Pixar. He said after he was fired, I'm convinced the only thing that kept me going is I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is true for work as it is for your lovers. The only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it, keep looking. Don't settle. That was his advice. In 1995, Apple hit a huge low, and Steve Jobs was brought back into the company. They bought Next. They bought his company Next. He came in. Eight months later, he was interim CEO. And in 1997, he did an unprecedented deal with Bill Gates. Bill Gates invested $150 million in Apple, in return for which Apple put Internet Explorer on their browser. <laughs> in 1998, he did the iMac computer. In 2000, he became CEO again. In 2001, the iPod. And in 2003, he was diagnosed with cancer. He had surgery in 2004. He went on 2006, sold his company Pixar to Disney for $8.6 billion. He brought out the iPhone in 07, he had a river transplant in 09, the iPad came out in 2010, and in 2011 he announced that he could no longer be CEO of his company. This man, rejected at birth by a set of two parents, turned out to be someone who brought computer technology to the masses. He taught us how to live, and he taught us how to die. So I'd like each of you to take a little apple from the basket and remember Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm.